Okay, so let's just take a few minutes to look at how to block something out with Forger. So I whether you start with a sphere or a, it doesn't really matter what you start with, but as with most programs, I always try and go as low polygon as I can when I'm blocking out. So what I would generally do is start with a sphere, come down to the tools, look at transformation, and then bring it up onto the um, above the, the grid. Just to give us a reference, because at some point I'm going to put feet that come down, um, down you know, onto the floor there, and I want to be able to um, be really sure that I am on the floor. So if that's going to be my um, body, let's just say that that will be uh, the the bulk of a stylized body. Then symmetry is on, as you can see up here, uh, and I'm just going to use go all the way back up here to the move tool. And this is one of the tools that I would use more than anything. Larger brush, because you don't want to pinch like you just saw me do. And then I just literally pull out where I think the chest's gonna be. Only rough, really, really rough, no more than this. Um, the hips are gonna be here. It's gonna be a, a really big, like top heavy guy with skinny little legs. Um, maybe I've just realized he's a tiny bit too low there. So I'll just quickly go back to transform him, you know, bring him a bit higher. It could change massively, but we'll see. So that, that's enough for a chest. Uh, what you could do now is you, you could start doing this. So you could start with, um, say, clay, and you could start bringing out the arms or the shoulders or the you know some, something that's going to start the definition of the limbs. Um, uh, you know, if um, if we weren't doing a, like a video on primitives, then that that would be one of the ways that I would I would pretty much do the whole of, of, of this this build uh, but I don't want to so what I want to do is just add things in add primitives in and, and just show you that way of doing it so let's just go back and we'll add in let's go to objects and uh, won't bother naming anything I'll just literally start adding things in so we'll add in the cylinder first of all and then we have a quick look at what it's like scale wise so we just go up to let's go um, transform this one We'll bring it up on the right hand side. We'll scale it down and scale it vertically like that. So that's going to be the, the upper arm. And then we'll try and get it into a, this is this is the humerus. The, we'll try and get it into the, the kind of position that we'd want. Again, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to put it into sort of an A pose. Um, like so. I'm going to go up to it. I'm going to strike across, duplicate it, and bring that one down. I'm going to rotate this one around now a little bit and then I'm going to keep just just using these these translation tools uh, and then I'm going to scale that one back up and then I'm just going to go back to the move tool and I'm just going to move that roughly so that it covers that joint and don't worry too much other than that we might think about a hand there at some point but for now it's nothing more than a than a placeholder so, you know, nothing beyond that is really needed at this stage. So I quite like those two, and they're in roughly the right position. Um, again, I'm thinking of this as more of an armature. So that was cylinder, this one, cylinder, and cylinder zero. So if you just go down here and go, go I want cylinder and cylinder zero, tick them both, merge them both, so yes, that's combined them, and now you've got them two combined. Now, before we go any further, I want to duplicate those. So I'm just going to duplicate them. So I've got two in the same place. And if you just hold on the symmetry there, you can just mirror them. I just want a mirror across X, and that gives me two. So that's that sorted out straight away. So um, we're, let's just think about a head. So we might want to put something like a, um, go back to objects, and we'll just put a sphere in for the head. Again, it's gone, the size has gone up really tiny so let's just come back out and have a look that's worked fine uh, as we know and then we'll just go back to transform and we'll move it up roughly the right position i'm making a, some kind of creature i think i won't even bother with a huge neck i'll just have it like that sort of thing and uh, maybe squash it down a little bit so yeah so i've got something in the right place that's cool so let's go back and do what we did for the arms so we'll find ourselves um, uh, let's just do another cylinder and then we'll scale it down. In fact, 
get it in the right place first of all, scale it down. Move it down. And then angle it a tiny bit. And angle it out a tiny bit. I'm gonna have short stocky legs on this guy, I think, so he's he's I wouldn't say gorilla like, but they're not going he's not gonna be much off a gorilla. Um no, it's a little bit. The body's showing that it needs a bit more width there on the on the body itself. So if you go back to 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 the sphere itself, make sure you're on move, and then in fact, let's just come off that. Be on move, and then we're just thinking now about his groin area, a bit round the side there, and maybe just a little bit of a of a butt. Nothing major. And that covers the where his, his hip comes up here, uh, and, the, and the top of this this cylinder here. Um, let's do that one again, and we'll scale this one up, down a little bit. Let's curl duplicate that one. Should all make sense in a moment. Uh, rotate him round. So I want to scale him up first because I want this to be quite chunky. Rotate him round. There we go. The whole thing now is a little bit too, you know, he's going to intercept the ground here now. So when I finish the whole thing, we'll need to draw. So that will probably do it. Um, maybe just for my own benefit, um, just put a little bit of clay on here. All I'm doing is just bring, just to tell me that the feet are going there, the knees go in there. Oh, that's too much. Didn't even need to do that much. There we go, and we'll, and we'll sort that out in a moment. So that's going to be cylinder and cylinder zero, the last two that we did. So we'll go back and we'll weld them two first of all, because we want to mirror them across as well, don't we? So cylinder and cylinder zero, merge them, say yes. And then that one, we'll just duplicate it and mirror it, exactly as before. And there you go, you've blocked out your character straight away. Now, this is the interesting bit. So we've obviously got all these parts, so we're going to merge them all together. And um, say yes to that. So that's now one big mess, as you can see. But these are separate objects, and this is where the interesting bit happens. So if I just show you the wireframe, we're still dealing with separate objects, um, which we don't want. So what we want to do is the important bit. So we need to go up here, come back to mesh, and you've got two options here. So subdivide will literally times everything by four. So every polygon is going to be times by four as per um, a normal subdivision operation. We don't want that because we're not trying that yet. What we're after is this bit here, which is remesh. And this is going to mesh it all together. But I generally start quite low. I try and go low. Let's just see what happens. Do that and see what's happened there. It's made an error at the bottom. And that means I've gone too low. So you can see how low poly that has gone. And we don't want that. So what we're going to do is just a little bit higher and then remesh. And you can see there. Now, straight away, it isn't voxels, obviously. But what this is giving me is a very flexible mesh to start with. So if you want to block out your characters this way, still use primitives as you would normally do in ZBrush or Blender or whatever you know program you, you like. But get into the habit of doing this remesh and get into the habit of um, re remeshing higher and lower. So if you look at that now, um, I'm going to keep changing it. You can see me changing it as I'm talking. It's remeshing and remeshing. Don't go too high because we're still in very, very early um, you know, creation uh, time here we're not in any kind of refinement and a lot of things can change before we go anywhere else so what i would suggest you do at that at this point a couple of things uh one move it up get it back onto in fact i didn't mean to move that down move it up uh get it back onto uh, the floor that would be useful so straight away he would be cool and you can see he doesn't look like he's stable anyway at the moment so go back to our move and then big brush and let's just start some big sweeping statements about oops didn't put symmetry on there did i so make sure our symmetry is back on and now let's give him some um center of balance really because you can see he wasn't he was tipping over um straight away 
Um, there we go, so he's looking good. All I'm looking for here is form. All I'm looking for is does does he work as a character? Is he going to fall over? Has he got a good centre of balance? Has he got one of everything that I want? So you can see I haven't put ears on. Uh, let's go for some clay now. So not too huge, low low settings. We don't need any kind of stamps or anything. You know, we're not after any surface detail whatsoever. But what we can do now is we can just lay in some of the primary muscles. We start thinking about his, where his deltoids are going to come in. And even if you're doing fantasy creatures, make sure you're referencing, you know, the real thing. You need to be thinking about what, you know, what this creature is, what is, you know, where does he live? What, you know, is he is he humanoid based? Does he work on the same sort of muscle structure that we would have? All the usual character creature design kind of rules that we would we would want to follow. So that's fine for his um, upper arm for the time being. There's a funny little um, uh, kind of like a joint, like I don't know what you call it. But from the, from the remesh there, we got a little bit of skin coming across. But I'm not massively bothered. It's not it's not going to need taking out. So I'm now just putting in the main kind of muscle groups. The chest, like the bottom end of the pecs, is going to be quite fat. So start putting what, where his uh, abdominals would be. Start thinking about where his ribs and his come down here where his, his lats are. Give him a little bit of a spine. You can see I'm doing nothing more triceps than just roughing him in. Give him something like a semi decent trapezius because he's got a big head to hold there. And we can knock all this back. Um, I forgot the back end of the deltoid there. So all of the usual anatomical lumps and bumps that you'd want to find to make a creature a, a, a humanoid work um, and down on his arms get those ridge muscles going a bit more on his tricep so he's kind of reading already. Is you know I think we can start sculpting more. I don't think he needs a huge amount of work uh, in terms of corrective surgery. Is what I mean. Where we're going to put some hands like here. So back to move if you feel like you need to. So I'm thinking of putting a bend in there with where the hands are going to go. Uh, I mean this video is going to stop before I get into any detail like fingers or anything like that, but. You can see what I mean, what I'm shooting for. Um, back to clay. These are the tools I generally use the most. Um, uh, I do use, uh, for this kind of uh, time, I do use flatten quite a lot as well. Um, so it's one of the ones where, or planar, something like that, something that chews off the surface. You can see where that knee was. I didn't want to just smooth it down. Um, I would probably use flatten more than the, than the planar ones. Um, just take some of those volumes down before we, we build them back up. Um, chew a little bit off there. Let's have a look at his butt. Um, so if he does need a butt, um, it would be best to use something like the crease tool. Um, now, at any point now, you might change him significantly. So, so this is this is a great this is a great one. So let's have a look at the wireframe. So if that's the wireframe now, I'm going to do a crease in here, and that's going to significantly pinch that down, um, and that's changing the mesh a little bit. So what I would do at that point is I call for a remesh, like so. And what that's done now, it's given me geometry to work with in there. Um, and that's really crucial for you know keep doing keep doing that remesh at this stage. I, I call it um, when I'm I'm teaching ZBrush this this sort of stage. I, I generally kind of call it creation, and it means we're still at some point now we could rip stuff off or we could change it significantly. Um, so don't 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 worry about major corrective surgery while we're still roughing out. But that means you can't do anything in detail. So you can only really be doing these these primary forms. Don't don't get bogged down into anything that you'd you'd miss. So if you start thinking of doing facial details or anything like that, 
then you know you're going to get yourself in trouble a little bit there so with inflate you know a good rule is really as low as you can afford to be with inflate um because it is you know it, it is going to do some some damage uh and remesh see and that will probably fix everything we want there which it did and then back of his gastronemux so big calves on him skinny these calves down a bit you can see i'm using a very limited tool set i'm not trying to get clever or you know all i'm trying to do is just use this basic set of tools and shape up his feet keep getting a low battery here so i should have started with a more charged ipad um ipad's performing really well if anyone's following me on on this little journey of learning forger um you know it, it, this is a four gig machine um and it's got uh this one's got the 256 hard drive and i've had no problems with this whatsoever you can see this isn't even i mean it's not high res yet so but it's not chugging at all it's not causing me any problems at all uh, let's just put a couple of muscles in here so we we've got a little bit of a, a lead down to where his knees are so that will be up here Sartorius. just literally lift, listing off the muscles that i'd want in there and we can do a load more work but if there's something in there to pin it to to you know to where it's it's going to come from then you, you, you your battles already on, on, on in a good place you're gonna you're gonna win if it's if it's reading at this rough stage um, and as I'm spinning now, I'm seeing areas that are just not working, but that, that would mean that would give me plenty of scope now to go in and when I, when I start on the, ref, you know, the, the, the more of the, the refinement, then I'll be, I've got one of everything to work with. I'm not going to really be moving anything significantly. Um, his spine doesn't look good, does it? Because it still looks like a ball in there. So we'd probably go in and, you know, at, l at least hint at the back here I'll just show the hint of the ribs and then well coming around the back there's a couple of big muscles missing there so this one here get this terrors major in there and we're almost there actually I just want a tiny bit of work on his neck I mean I, I haven't timed this yet but you know I don't like spending any amount of time on this sort of stuff. I like doing this as fast and loose as we can. Um, and, and the better it is at this stage, then the happier I'm going to be down the line. I don't polish turds at all. If it doesn't read in rough, whether it be pencil or Procreate or on the, you know, whatever I'm doing, if it doesn't read at this stage, it doesn't get any further at all. I don't, and I do, I do loads of these where I'm, I, I just can them, um, just for practice. Really, just just keeps me going. Um, uh, let's just give it a little bit of. Um, just want I'm not going to do a face, but I'm going to have to just suggest that I want something in terms of a face. Um, so at least looks a bit ninja turtley there straight away, which it really wasn't meant to be. But and I'm not using reference here, which is never a good thing. So you know, if if you're going, if you're learning this sort of stuff. Um, you know, just get onto your reference. Um, it, it shows in your work massively. It's um, if I don't go back and do a creature, I don't go back and do life drawings after a, a year or two. It, you know, it, it does slip massively. Um, or if you can get yourself on one of the better courses of anatomy, you know, if you can get onto Scott Eaton's or you know, follow some of Ryan Kingley, Kingsley's online or something like that, something where you can really peck out some of the the, the 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 good skills that you need um a great one to learn uh, anatomy from is stan Pro Pro prokopenko i can't even say his name um stan teaches um uh, w one of the things i like about it is it's like the andrew loomis method of drawing which is from the 1940s i believe i can't remember what sort of exactly when it was but that's i i tend to use that in all my drawings um Pretty much that style. There we go. So we've got we've got a little bit of uh, you know. I mean, that could change. As I say, could change completely um, once I work. You know, once I start working into it. But we've got a low res area, and we could put separate eyes in when we're when we're ready to go. 
Um, I'll just do one more crease on here. Oops, didn't, didn't take, did it? Uh, one more crease here. And you can see it's very, very blocky. And still, let's have a look at the res. So we're still looking at a very, very low, low poly. Um, you know, it's not chugging at all. And you've got a blocked out in a few minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, you have it all blocked out and ready and ready to go. These few errors I've left in there, look. Um, but that's how I would work it. Uh, I started, you know, I've, I've started to work with, with, um, forger but this is the crucial bit the the, the the remesh side or here on the right hand side get get used to doing this remesh um you know you could remesh quite high now like this what it says here is it's it, it wants to, it's detected a high resolution number this mesh can be remeshed given resolution so what it's saying is it's going to flush the memory or flush the history so i'm not suggesting do that that i've just done because it's going to give you a much higher res mesh you only do that when you're ready to detail in in in, in my experience so we haven't got toes on this yet we haven't got um you know we haven't got anything yet really so you know all we've got is a block out so i wouldn't suggest doing that now i just wanted to show you but that's how i i use it i find this sort of work now way faster in vr so i'm using things like oculus medium and masterpiece and all of the voxel based programs for this kind of block out because that would take where this takes 10 or 15 minutes that would take two or three minutes um but the more you do it more you know the faster you can block out a body the, the, the better you'll become um and it means your mistakes are coming out quicker so what's left is the good stuff so just if you want to use forger then it's you know i cannot tell you how excited i am by by having this ability on my ipad um or you know it, you, you know i'm seeing some amazing stuff out there from from people so it's it's, it's obviously a, it's getting to be a popular iPad app now, and um, I'm sure it has been for some long, you know, some time. I didn't start with it uh, very well, didn't like it in the first few few goes, so it's taken me a few years of just sitting back, and now I've decided to spend a week or two with it. I'm absolutely loving it. So that remesh is the key to, to a lot of this, so have a go with that and see how you get on. I'll save this model, and I'll get another video done where I start detailing it and working it up, and then eventually onto some colour.